Okay, gang, we're going to go over the wiring options uh, in a little more detail than the previous video, I hope, and uh, hopefully it'll answer some more of the questions that are frequently asked. Uh, the first thing is um, the power socket. And your wires are screwed into the back. You saw it's just a matter of stripping the three wires, running them into the back, and screwing them down, which I do for you when you um, get the patch cord, which most people do. And what the patch cord is, is generally an IEC tip that will run into your pedal power 2. Um, some people will be using things other than a pedal power 2 that will require um, a regular a regular tip for plugging in a wall wart, like a, a Dunlop power supply would use one of these. So either one, uh, whatever um, patch cable is needed. Uh, will be attached to the power socket. The other option that you have is if you have a wall wart or another um, outside AC source that you need to plug into, um, you can have an AC outlet on your board. And this can be mounted um, across the top of your board here or on the opposite end of where your power socket might be. This is a good idea to me if only if you have something that you're going to be plugging in and, and unplugging um, on a continuous basis. If you've got stuff, if you've got uh, wall warts that you need to plug in that are going to stay plugged in, then you can, a better idea to me is to mount them under the board. And a way to do that, and maybe better to show you on my board here, you have a couple, couple ways to go. You can uh, run a regular Y cord right out of the back of your pedal power too that just plugs in and then it's got two things here. You can mount your wall warts underneath, tie everything down with a couple cable clamps, and you're not taking up any of your valuable space on top for an outlet. Another way to go is if you have a pedal power and you need an outlet underneath, um, I now have these cables which give you your plug for your pedal power, and then one to plug in a wall wart. And then I can mount these into your power socket and you're good to go. And if that's not enough, perhaps you need more outlets. So then you get a Y cord, like what's on the bottom of my board there. Plug that in. Now you have two outlets plus your cable for your pedal power. But why stop there? because people are getting pretty crazy anymore with the uh, dedicated power supplies necessary for some of your higher end in particular cable uh, pedals. So then, if you need, there's four of those bad boys to plug into. Hopefully you've got room under your board for that many. <laughs> and so those are your options as far as powering underneath. And uh, again, it, it, it all takes a little bit of time. This all comes, uh, it's real simple, so it's, um, I'll wire these in for you whenever you buy that first patch cable and, and uh, take it from there. And that should set you up for your power supply for your normal 9 volts and all the extra wall warts that you might have for under your board. Another thing I wanted to uh, point out is because I get uh, people requesting it. They think it'd be a good idea just to have a surge protector or a power strip put underneath the front of the board. And it will fit, but barely. And it's very, very limiting because, to, it, for example, if this was to go plugging into your power strip this way, even this one, this is a really big wall wart, but this one here, by the time you plugged it in, it would be sitting here. And this is a little bit shorter than normal board, so the depth is not real real accurate to a, to a 15 inch deep board. But as you can see, it becomes very tight and it, it will be covering up two outlets going this way. And if the surge protector happens to have the outlets turned the opposite direction and you're plugging in this way, then there's no way it's going to work. It's going to be hanging down. So it's, it's very difficult to put a surge protector in the front. You're far better off, in my opinion, to use something like this. And this really gives you the flexibility to put them wherever you want around your power supply. And, you know, I like to put them up, up to the front of the board. And so it's just really a better idea all the way around. Okay, now I want to talk about the Nutrix. Um, they're quarter inch and they are stereo. So you have uh, three prongs on the back. You're only going to use two of them most of the time in a mono application. Um, the only time you're using the third one is if it is a, for a stereo use. Um, 
usually I don't do soldering and I tell people that you know you're gonna have to solder on the back but just recently I found that you can get away with using these connectors um, this one here is a 3 16th and I think you could actually go one size smaller to a 1 8 and it's a 16 to 14 gauge end for wires but uh, they will then hook on to these and save you from having to solder. Now the terminal for the ground is a little bit thicker so you're going to have to shove a little screwdriver or something in it and just open this up a little bit for the ground. But if you get those put on the end of your wire and put these on. So uh, by the way you see you got um, uh, the black cutout, black area for the cutout here and on the other side is where the lock is, the red lock. When you're wiring these up the ground will go to the fat terminal and the other one will go to this terminal right here with the with the black cutout. So that's simple to do. Now <clears throat> once you put these in, I'm gonna show you on my board. And I, you know I went to the point of using uh, shrink tubing and stuff to clean them up but once I got them on there and put them in place you know they're kind of tight but they you know what really keeps them in place even better is when you screw them down with the little wire clamps right here and now that's solid um, I'm not experiencing any noise whatsoever and I didn't have to solder a thing uh, so some, something to consider uh, while I got this board here I want to show you another thing that I did some guys like to have their foot switch for their amp on their board I do <laughs> um, and what I've done is run the cable from my foot switch down through the grommet with everything else and then just made a short cable that's tied into the board here and instead of having to try to squeeze in actually there wouldn't even be room to put in a couple more new tricks here um, I usually end up with my foot switch um, cable just coming out the bottom of my board when I need it and then I'm just plugging cables go just plugging the cables in right there and so everything's coming out in a nice uniform fashion um, another thing I want to talk about just real quick here is I started making these aluminum brackets for the pedal power supply and just to give you an idea this is this is how they work um, if, you, if you need need some for your own board and you uh, are a little handy you can make them yourself it's just a piece of half inch aluminum that you can pick up at Home Depot um, drill a couple holes pretty small just barely bigger than the, big enough for the screw and they're going to fit right here using the existing screws and the pedal power too. There are two and three eighths of an inch center to center on those. That's the, that's the number that's important. And then just a couple holes to screw into the board. And there you go. Easy deal and uh, much more effective than Velcro when you can do it. Um, I don't have them for every other power supply because I'd have to have the power supply in front of me to see if it has the same kind of construction or distance between holes but if you are handy you can you can make something work for whatever you got